Greetings to everyone from the team Own Your Growth. And today we have with us Dr. Thompson Jose, who will be talking to us on career opportunities after BNYS. A little introduction about Dr. Thompson. He's a young and enthusiastic doctor in natural medicine who graduated in naturopathy and yogic sciences, securing gold medal from the government nature care and yoga medical college and hospital from Mysore. He has gained a diverse experience in career ranging from assistant professor, medical officer, guest speaker, wellness consultant, freelance doctor, blogger, and much more. Dr. Thompson, who holds immense experience in dealing with international clients, is currently working as a wellness consultant at Banyan Tree Wellbeing Sanctuary, Phuket, Thailand. His current role not only includes being a consultant, but also leading role in the expansion of wellness projects of this luxury international wellness brand. Being an excellent orator and having a strong foundation in the field has enabled him to be invited as guest speakers on multiple online platforms and offline platforms and institutions in India as well as abroad. Prior to his international experience, Dr. Thompson has worked in assist as assistant pro professor come medical officer at Sviasa University, Bangalore, and as a physician in various other hospitals in India. He has in himself practiced and proclaimed that a healthy lifestyle can help us prevent diseases. Glad to have you on our platform, sir, and over to you for the session. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. I hope I am audible enough. Yes, you are. Okay, so I'll share my screen and then move on to the session. I hope my screen is visible. Yes, to you. sir, it is. Okay. All right. Yes. So today I'll be introducing you to the immense opportunities that you are having or the career opportunities that you're having uh, after your BNYS graduation. So let me uh, give you a brief introduction about myself, apart from what uh, the moderator has already given. So as you might be knowing now, I got graduated from uh, the Mysore Government, Mysore National Pathibility College. And after that, or during my student life, uh, we never got to know any opportunities or nobody was there to speak about the career opportunities. Probably some of you, as you are watching this from different colleges, maybe your colleges are offering, but at least from my college, there was no such uh, talks given or I didn't get to have a chance uh, to hear about people speaking about career opportunities. So I think it is a very, uh, required topic to be addressed for all the BNYS students who are listening to this. And yeah, we all came to do this BNYS with different reasons, right? So yeah, that's something about me, which is already discussed. So before we get into the, the topic of career opportunities, we all came to do this BNYS course or the naturopathy course with different reasons. Some of you might have done a proper research you really got to know what is BNYS and you came to do this BNYS, if that is the case. Well, okay. Some of you probably might have come hearing, okay, somebody recommended, okay, I have, I know a good cause, you can become a doctor. So somebody recommended maybe your family friend is already a BNYS doctor. You thought of giving it a try as well. Another group of people can be like, okay, you are a yoga champion. You're really good at doing yoga and you want to do a decent course which is related to yoga and you are here doing the BNYS course. Another one can be like you want to do a medical course and BNYS happen to be the one. Another group can be like the entrance trials go to here like probably you were applying for a BNYS or BAMS or BHMS and finally you got BNYS and you are doing the BNYS course. And the last one probably a majority of you will fall under would be the idiopathic reasons. So if you are if you are above second year or second year or more than that, you will be knowing what is idiopathic reason is. So idiopathic reason is nothing but uh, the reason is unknown, right? So you, you didn't know anything about BNYS. Uh, you didn't do any research. Somehow you happen to fall under or you happen to choose BNYS as your, as your graduation topic or a graduation subject. What will be the reasons uh, now you are doing BNYS and you are at a very good place or a right place. Uh, don't think like, okay, maybe you are not liking it or will I get a job 
or does this uh, BNYC is having any career opportunities after this or not? Don't worry about all those things. You are you are having immense opportunities waiting in front of you, provided you are having very good potential. From my personal experience, uh, after my BNYC graduation, after my internship, I have never got a situation like I have to you know, try getting into a job or sit jobless at home. Such kind of a situation has touch would never happen till now. So if you are really passionate, if you're really having the potential, there are immense numerous opportunities waiting uh, ahead of you in the future. Okay, so the code that you're seeing on the screen is a very popular English code, which is Jack of all trades and uh, master of none. Probably you can relate it to most of the BNYS students, what they will be feeling at least during their student life. See, like we learn a lot of things, a lot of modern subjects. And probably you will feel like, okay, after learning this subject also, I am not the mainstream person to practice that, right? For example, we are learning pharmacology and we are not really prescribing medicines once we become a doctor. We are learning obstetrics and gynecology and we are not practicing or we are not becoming a gynecologist after learning that subjects. We learn physiotherapy in our final year and there are mainstream physiotherapists who do that. We learn yoga for four or five years and there are hundreds, thousands, millions of yoga teachers, gurus present out there. So probably many of us I felt this during my student life, probably you might be feeling it now, where to position ourselves, right? So what are we really doing or what, what should I do after BNYS? Wherein all these mainstream people are there, where can we really position ourselves? That is why I put the call, jack of all trades, master of none, but don't take it as a, as a bad thing. It is a very positive thing because all the subjects that we are learning, you can go do a master's or a further study on that and you know you can proceed your career with that subject or with that as your mainstream uh, practice so yes take it as a very positive thing that you can become a master in many diverse fields so maybe you are in bnys and you don't like yoga there are other things to choose from or you don't like uh, physiotherapy or such kind of exercise things, then you can go for other clinical aspects. If you don't like clinical things, there are other things to choose from. So immense diverse fields are there to choose from. So now I know you will be eagerly waiting to know what are the career opportunities that, uh, that you can do or choose after the BNY. So without much further introductory talk, let me move on to the career opportunities. First one is nothing but academics and research. So whenever I say any topic, just you have to think about what is your passion, what is your interest, and what is that thing you really love to do. Don't see into uh, the job status or how much, or the remuneration aspect, how much you earn. Don't see into all those things because if you see into all those things, uh, probably one or two years you will be okay with your job, but after that, you won't really enjoy what you're doing. So look into yourself, see whether is it something really I am interested in or not, and then research more on what I talk. Okay, so first is academics and research as I spoke. So this is probably a very general thing that most of you will be knowing already, like you can do your master's after your BNYS graduation which is nothing but doing an MD, MSc, or doing a PhD after your MD or MSc. So you probably will be knowing you can do an MSc in clinical naturopathy, sorry, an MD in clinical naturopathy. There are MD courses offered for yoga, MD yoga, acupuncture, nutrition, dietetics, and many more, which you can find in India and as well as abroad as well. So if you are a person who is really looking forward to get into academics, like you want to become an assistant professor or a professor later in the later part, 
or you want to get into research field or you want to become a senior medical officer in government sector or in very uh, high class or high profile hospitals, you can consider doing MD or MSc. Now, MD should be done uh, as a, a, a full-time course. If you can't afford to do that, you can go for doing MSc, either online or offline uh, education you can choose from. So MSc is also a possibility. So in MSc also, there are numerous subjects to choose from, like yoga, psychology, physiology, anatomy, and a lot more uh, MSc courses are there. So do research on that as well. Again, uh, after MSc, if you really want to get into uh, researches, all those things, do go for a PhD as well, because then you will become more equivalent towards doing uh, like an MD, like you can really get into uh, academics. As you can see, the job scope is like you can become professors in academic institutions, you can become a researcher, medical officers, and much more. Again, research is a very key thing that you have to focus upon. There are uh, the research field in, in our yoga naturopathy field is actually really booming these days. So you might be knowing about SVASA University in, in South India and at Bangalore, which is doing a lot of researches. Uh, NIMHANS is doing a lot of research on yoga and its effects on different diseases. There are many more uh, institutions doing researches in India as well as abroad, and it is a very new booming uh, field. So if you are interested in any of these academics or research, uh, you can try think about doing MD, Masters, and MSc, as well as PhD. I know most of you will be knowing about this opportunity after BNYS. Let us see a few more interesting things uh, in the further slides. Next is one, uh, next one is hospitality industry. So Currently, I work in hospitality industry. So basically here, you will be working in a world-class luxury standard. So probably it will be like a wellness centers, a spa, or in any luxury resorts, which is in the, in the hospitality industry, you will, can be getting an opportunity to work after BNYS. Now, who should look into this? If you, if you really like working in India, or especially if you work, like to work in overseas, get a very good pay, get to meet international clients, very high profile clients. If these all are your interests in, this is something which you have to consider upon. And again, here, if you consider working in a hospital and a hospitality industry is very different because working in a hospital, you are the doctor and you are advising the person to do this, this, these things. And probably the patients are obliged to obey what, what all things you recommend. But in a hospitality industry, of course you are recommending, but the guest is on a very higher, higher side. So they will request for doing something. Maybe you will have to slightly negotiate or kind of, you know, you have to play around because they are considered to be on a higher side uh, than the doctor. So here we are more like an advisor. We are not really making them to do, but we can recommend or advise. So it is two different entities working in hospital and the hospitality industry. Uh, to get into hospitality industry, you will have to really set your standards really high. When I say about standards, it is your, uh, your orating skills, like your language should be good enough. It shouldn't be like, you know, like uh, a native English speaker, but at least you have to be good enough to convey what you want to the guest. You should have a very good personality like your, your, uh, your physique should be good. You have to maintain your body because for example, in a hospitality industry, if you're teaching yoga and you are really obese and having a big belly in front and you are teaching yoga to them, they will not be convinced. How can you say like having a tummy for yourself and you are saying, come, hey, come, I can uh, help you to lose your weight. So you should have a very good physique. So you, if you're considering hospitality as your future thing, uh, start working on your language skills, also on your uh, maintaining your physical body because how you look is very important in this field. The job perks include a very good pay. You get to meet a very high profile clients. You can grow in this field. And really, if you are having the potential, you can grow up 
say for example, you might be starting your career as a practitioner or a consultant. Maybe you can move in, move as an assistant manager or manager then to the director level as well if you are really having the potential. So that is the hospitality industry. And here, as I already mentioned, you get to meet really, really high profile clients. I have met many clients whom I never even dreamed about, you know, I could meet this person, uh, such people you will, you might uh, come across, or they will be coming as your clients in the hospitality industry. So probably this is something uh, which you can consider after BNYS. Allow me, move, allow me to move into the third one, which is nothing but dietitian. So if nutrition and dietetics is uh, something which you are really interested in, or you have a real grip on nutrition dietetics, then you can think about doing MD in nutrition and dietetics, or even MSc in nutrition and dietetics. There is also something called as PGDND, which is called a PG Diploma in Nutrition and Dietetics, which can be done uh, offline as well. So these three things probably you can look into. Of course, MD should be done as a full-time for three years and MSc and PGDND can be done either distant or as a full-time course. Uh, if you are planning to continue your work in India, you can get this done in India or if you are planning to go work in any other countries and if you have already set your plans, okay, something like I want to work in Australia, so I always recommend and then go get the masters in that country. So it is not only here in nutrition dietetics, also when I mentioned about MD, also uh, any other masters that you, are, you want to do and you know which country or you wish to work in this country, try to think or try to plan to do get that masters in that country. So as I mentioned, if you already have the plan, okay, I want to work in Australia, then try going, getting a master's in Australia, because that will help you to get the license or to get a job much more easier in that country, because you are already having a master's from that country. So it will be much easier to get your license or your job there. And dietitian is emerging as a supportive therapy, even in Many of the hospitals in India currently have dietitian post. So in the, all the modern medicine, medicine hospitals, so whatever disease or whatever condition the person is coming from, before discharge, they will make an appointment to consult with the dietitian. So here the dietitian will be recommending them what diet they should follow once they get back home. And that is really, really emerging these days. Almost all the hospitals, high profile hospitals, are having this dietitian post. So numerous opportunities will be coming up. So if nutrition dietetics is something which you really like or you're having a strong grip in it, go for doing MD, MSc or PCDND, whichever suits you according to your time, financial status, et cetera. Another interesting, interesting topic, a very celebrated, uh, opportunity, which probably many of you would be knowing, is to work as an acupuncturist on cruise lines. Why this is very, uh, very celebrated probably is because probably many of us like to travel, right? If you are fascinated about traveling the world and you can work by traveling, then you can ask for anything better, right? So working on a cruise ship is like you are traveling around the world, you are getting opportunities to, opportunity to meet high profile clients, work in very luxury standards, then this is something which you can really consider about. So to do this, to get into a work as an acupuncturist on cruise lines, you will have to do an MD acupuncture after your BNYS graduation. So currently, Currently, the company which is hiring acupuncturists, acupuncturists to the cruise line, they are considering the acupuncture from OIUCM University from Sri Lanka, do research on that, OIUCM University. Uh, this MD acupuncture from this university is currently considered uh, for the recruitment process. If you want to get into this, 
uh, there is some another course called as SDCW uh, course, which is basically uh, a first aid or a kind of emergency training that you should be doing before you get into cruise lines. For example, when there is a fire or the ship is sunking, sinking, uh, what things to be done? Like your basic fire and safety course you can call, should be done uh, from India for two years, if I'm not, sorry, two weeks, if I'm not wrong, STCW. And after doing all this MD acupuncture and STCW, getting all your uh, qualifications done, you will have an interview. Once you clear the interview, you will have a one month uh, training course, like basically to teach you the standards or the methods of uh, doing or working on a cruise line will be conducted. So usually this is uh, conducted in San Francisco for a month. So that is after you get into or you get the interview cleared. The job work is that you get to travel the world, very highly paid and very good position that you're getting on a cruise line. Not many associates on a cruise line get a single accommodation, but you are considered as a acupuncturist or a doctor and you will get single accommodation and very many other perks you will get working on a cruise line. So that is uh, working as an acupuncturist on a cruise line. And again, as I already mentioned, uh, don't see into the remuneration aspect or the job status. See whether what are your, your interests or your passion zone and see according or categorize the opportunities or the options according to that. Many options, many, many factors can be there like probably somebody or some of you might want to work in overseas, some of you want to continue in India, some of you are interested in clinical, some of you will be in non-clinical, so see what is interesting you and do the search, do your further research on that basis. Let us move on to the next slide, which is nothing but hospital administration. So as I already mentioned, uh, some of you will be interested to continue as a clinician, like you want to continue as a doctor working in a clinic or a hospital, seeing patients, uh, giving treatments and curing them. Whereas there will be a huge number of you who doesn't want, who don't want to do that, who don't want to continue uh, in the clinic side. Probably some of you will be really good at administration, right? If you are such a person, this is something for you. MBA in hospital administration. So the duration of the course is two years. You can do it either offline or online, but I would recommend doing it as a full-time course because you will gain a lot of practical experience doing this MBA in hospital administration. It can be done from India as well as from abroad. So again, if you have plans to work abroad, if you can afford to study abroad, go do this abroad. But again, in India also, you will get very good universities, good colleges offering this. You can do this from India as well. Now the job scope, uh, let me explain you what would be your job scope. So after you complete the MBA in hospital administration, you will be getting into the management side of the hospital. Say so like you will be deciding each and everything to run or function that hospital, be it deciding which doctor to come, be it be like what, which brands or which, uh, what kind of medicines you should sell, sell there, what all things you have to offer, each and everything you have to manage, all the doctors, nurses, everything you have to manage and run the hospital. Probably the initial years can be a little challenging, like the job or the pay will not be very uh, fancy or you will have to work assisting the senior administrator. But once you get your experience and once you show your potential, your scope or your job scope or your, your level of growth can be even up to becoming the CEO of you know, the big hospital chains. So the, the basic, uh, say for example, we are already having the background from being a doctor and we are also doing MBA in the hospital administration. So we will be having a very good chance, consider you are having a very good potential in it. You will be having a very good chance to excel in this aspect, hospital administration. So if you don't want to choose or work in a clinic side, you are interested more in the administration, consider doing this MBA. Next is a very interesting one, which I am personally very interested in. 
which is nothing but a medical exercise specialist, which we in short, we call as MAS trainer or medical exercise uh, specialist. So if you are really interested in exercises or if you're interested in exercise and want to build a career over it, around it, this can be a very, very good opportunity or option that you can try. Well, now you probably will be knowing personal trainers or gym instructors, right? They will be there in all fitness centers, training people. They will be teaching them what exercise to do for which muscle to train, to gain muscle or to condition your body. There will be personal trainers to do that. Now, how an, a medical exercise specialist differs from a personal trainer is. Medical exercise specialist, to do this course, you should already have a medical background. For example, you should be either a physiotherapist or you should have a medical degree prior to do this. So not anybody can go and do this MBS. Whereas a personal trainer, anybody without any medical background, anybody can go and become a personal trainer. So as you are already coming from a medical background, you will be actually a specialist to plan exercise or you are basically treating the conditions through exercise. Let me give you a simple example. For example, uh, if you are, uh, if you know deadlift, there is something like uh, an exercise called as deadlift, which is basically lifting weight. So a personal trainer will be actually knowing, okay, how to do it. Whereas a medical exercise specialist will be knowing who should do, who shouldn't do. And if it is like a person shouldn't do, how he can, you know, they know, each and everything about the spine, the anatomy, the muscles working, the weaker areas or the injured areas. So they can better plan or better treat the person through exercise. So if this is something which is you are interested in, you can consider MES as your career. Again, this can be uh, done online. You can see ACE, which is American Council of Exercise. ISSA, which is International Sport Science Association. These two are very renowned uh, organizations which are offering MAS programs. You can look into their websites and learn more about it. So again, if you do this, you are really positioned above a personal trainer or a gym instructor for that matter, because you can train a person with injury or even without injury. Maybe you know you already have the knowledge of diet, nutrition, acupuncture. So you can be a very good person or a very good package of things, you know, like you can exercise, you can train them, you can offer acupuncture, you can prescribe them diet. So you will be more or less like a doctor, but more into the exercise aspect. Look into MES. Another one is a chiropractor, which is gaining a lot of popularity these days. If you have come across any of the videos of a chiropractor, probably you might have seen a magic doctor coming and cracking necks, cracking all the joints and people feeling really good right away at that moment. Chiropractor is basically, uh, you are manually adjusting uh, the anatomy of a person. Say for example, they usually do it to the neck, to the spine, basically to the, all the joints. If this is something which you feel interested, then this chiropractor can be considered basically a master degree program. It takes about four years uh, to do this program, not there in India for the moment, but you have to, I mean, you will have to do it from uh, other countries like US, UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. These five countries are the major uh, countries that you can choose, or you can do this chiropractor bachelor's, sorry, master's program from. Uh, from my research, what I have done, I got to know that if you already have a medical background, probably this four years can be cut down to three years. And two universities or colleges that I can recommend is Life University at Maraita, Georgia. Another one is the Sherman College of Chiropractice at uh, South California. These two uh, are very renowned universities that you can look into. Talking about chiropractic, something which I want to add is this is still considered as a pseudoscience and many countries do not have a real medical body to do it. 
for example, India is not at the moment not having a body to, you know, manage or they don't have a body for chiropractic, and hence you really cannot uh, what to say will not be recognized in many other countries. But in countries like as I said, US, UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, this is very widely gaining popularity, and hopefully very soon in India also we will have a body for this chiropractic. But again, as we already learned a bit of chiropractic during our BNYS program, if you are really good at it, if you learn this master's program, probably you can incorporate that knowledge in your clinic practice, be it in India or in any other countries as well. Uh, giving you another perspective, like for right now, I'm working in Thailand. Here, we, here also, we don't have a proper medical body for chiropractic, but there are many foreign chiropractitioners practicing here in Thailand, and you can do that without any legal issues because you don't have a specific body. So you still can do it legally here in Thailand. Okay, that was a chiropractor. Let us say something about uh, emergency medicine. During my BNY's days, uh, I used to go work uh, in allopathic hospitals or modern medicine hospitals as a duty doctor or to gain more knowledge about, about medicine aspects or the treatment aspects. I have worked as uh, uh, duty doctors or assisting the senior doctors there. Probably many of you also will be in, interested or are already doing that. It is good to, for the purpose of gaining knowledge, it is good to go there gain or see many conditions and you know for the academic aspect or to gain knowledge it is good but uh, for a long-term basis i don't really recommend doing that after bnys because uh, it is not really ethical to do that because you are doctor in naturopathy not in uh, modern medicine but still after bnys if you really want to continue doing uh, emergency medicine or work in the allopathy hospital, I have something for you, which is basically called as PGD-EMS, which is PG Diploma in Emergency Medical Services. The duration of this course is 12 months and the eligibility is uh, MBBS, BDS, BHMS, BAMS, and BNYS also fall under the so after BNYS, if you really want to continue your career in emergency medicine or to work in the hospital, you can think about consider doing PGD MS. The job scope is you can work in casualties uh, in a triage. So probably I hope you all know what is triage because whenever a patient comes to a casualty, you will have to do the initial assessment for the patient and you will be the one who decide whether you can prescribe a medicine and send the patient back home or you have to keep them under observation or you want to recommend for recommend the patient for higher um, medical care or not. So basically you will be the one who will be analyzing or assessing the patient when they come to the casualty. You can be also posted as a duty doctor in intensive care units and much more. So. Even after doing BNYS, your interest is to, is to work in emergency medicine department, PGD, EMS is something which you can think about. This course can be done from India as well, in, not India as well, from, you can do it from India, and which would be really helpful for practicing in India. Shall we move on to something called as paramedic? So again, this is also related to the previous one, which is emergency medicine department, but you want to work overseas in other countries, then paramedic is something which you can think about. So in the previous slide, we saw med more emergency medicine, you are doing it in India, but in paramedic, you are not working in hospital, but you are more or less working as a mobile doctor or a mobile hospital kind of an ambulance you can call, but it is way above the concept of ambulance. It is having, it is a vehicle, it's a van or yeah, a vehicle, and it is having all the emergency medicine or emergency equipments that should be there will be set up in that and you will be working on that vehicle. 
So for example, in countries like UK, for which this is open for now, uh, especially during the times like during times of Corona, wherein people who get sick don't want to go to the hospital because of uh, the infections around. For smaller problems or even serious problems, they can call this paramedic and you will have to go to them. So like you go to their house and see them and do the basic assessment. Uh, if it is a minor problem, prescribe medicine or whatever you do there. And if it's a serious problem and the person has to be shifted to the hospital, you have to shift them to the hospital giving the emergency care. So you are not working in a hospital, but you will be like a mobile doctor moving around. So probably maybe you get five calls a day and you attend five patients and you are done for the day. But the thing is that you have to move around. The eligibility to do this is MBBS and all other Irish systems are approved or are falling under the eligibility criteria. And to do this, you will have to do a three months bridge course after uh, the interview. So, so yes, so you will have to do the three months bridge course before the interview. So after this in uh, three months bridge course, which is usually happen, uh, happens in Delhi, New Delhi, you will have the interview and then you can proceed to go work in UK. You will also have to clear the IELTS exam, which is, uh, you probably might be knowing, which is the English proficiency exam. The IELTS exam, you should have a very decent score in that. And the, the greatest perk of this job is that you are getting employed with the NHS, the National Health uh, Service Scheme uh, in UK, which is a government body there. And you will be given uh, the visa for uh, a lifelong, like with the residence visa you'll be given, but you can take your family also kind of. So if think about that, if that is something which is uh, fascinating you, this is something which you can consider being a paramedic in UK or in other countries. Next one uh, is the public sector, or you might have heard about UPSC exams, becoming IAS, IPS, all those things. So if if serving the society is something which is really fascinating you or which is something really motivating you and you want to do reach out with your skills or with your abilities to much more than what you can do being as a doctor this is something which you can work or think about considering so the UPSC exam, uh, the criteria is that you have to do any degree from a recognized university. So BNYS is also uh, a degree, bachelor degree program, and we all are doing it from recognized universities. So we are basically eligible to do this UPSC examination. And again, a very competitive exam uh, done in three phases like there will be a preliminary exam, there will be a mains exam, and there will be an interview. So you'll have to clear all these three. And based on your rankings, you will be positioned like IES, IPS, IFS, and yeah, the list goes on. So if this is something which is really interesting to you, I really, really recommend giving it a try for the UPSC exams. There is also something called as ICCR, which is something about Indian Council of Cultural Relations. So this is also uh, you are working for the Indian government and you will be sent to other countries as a cultural ambassador. One good thing about doing this after BNYS is we are uh, the doctors in yoga, naturopathy and yoga is one among the culture from India. So it is a very good uh, thing to try for ICCR to learn, to learn more about ICCR, go to ICCR website and see what are the criteria. Uh, for doing the ICCR examinations. It is also having the three-phase system, same like UPSC, but it is for becoming the cultural ambassadors uh, for India in other countries. You can also think about other PSC exams as well uh, after your BNYS graduation. Next is uh, being an entrepreneur. So what is entrepreneur? You are starting your own setup or your own business, your own clinic. You can do whatever you feel interested in. <laughs> so if you are confident about your skills, if you are really confident about your potential and you have a very wonderful idea that can be scaled, then you have to really think about being an entrepreneur. Start 
something by your own. So before you start something by your own, I would recommend, say for example, you want to start a luxury kind of wellness resort in India, and that is something which you want to start. Go and work something similar. Go and work in a big luxury brand, which is something similar to what you want to initiate, because you will get an idea about how things are functioning in an international level or how things are happening outside, because uh, maybe as a fresher, you won't be knowing how things happen in, in India or in other countries, right? So go work in similar uh, industry or in similar companies or similar hospitals and gain knowledge and see how, how things are happening there, then go into uh, thinking about starting and your own setup, right? So if you have a better idea and experience, then launching the program, you will have more confidence and probably you can do it with the market standards or even better than that. <clears throat> At the Pranior, when I say, don't think about just starting a wellness center or an naturopathy clinic. Uh, maybe most of, many of you will be knowing about a naturopath, a doctor be after BNY started and what to say, something called as uh, a nutraceutical company. He is uh, producing supplements. So very great thinking out of the box, which usually normal BNY graduates think, right? So you can scale it. That can be something which can be really scaled. So a new idea. So if you have something such ideas, go for it. Recently, I have heard about a doctor after BNY is uh, started natural birthing centers. How interesting is that, right? Really thinking out of the box. So that is also something which you can consider uh, like if you are doing an entrepreneur, really thinking off the box other than just naturopathy clinic or, you know, a wellness center. If you have such ideas, if you're really confident, if you have the financial background, then go for it, launch it. Be an entrepreneur, right? <clears throat> Next one is uh, a very interesting, which is gaining a lot of popularity these days, especially during, because of the lockdown, Kind of the pandemic situation be an online entrepreneur right you don't need much investment you just need your potential your caliber to deliver it so if you are a good public speaker and you have computer good computer skills then yeah sky is the limit. let me give you a very simple personal experience during the last years the first lockdown we also had a lockdown here in thailand uh yeah we were all locked down sitting at home more time than you know when you work you have to go to work and for around a week we didn't have anything much to do because we are sitting in the home i just started uh, blogging writing blogs so i just did it like you know to pass my time i just uh, wrote some blogs and i just posted it on my social media platforms so one of my guests one of my patients who was there here in thailand in 2019 She's in UK and she has a wellness, her own a small, uh, she's an entrepreneur in wellness uh, department, like wellness field. She came across my uh, blog and she invited me to write on her social media platform or for her company. How cool is that? I just wrote to pass the time and somebody from another country read that and is offering me to write for them. So such is the huge opportunity that you are having being an online influencer. And these days, because of the pandemic, you probably will be knowing there are a lot of online consultations happening, health talks, yoga sessions, group or private consultations, counseling, meditation classes. You can start your own website, blogs, whatnot. You can do everything online these days. And especially because of the expansion of the internet or the wide popularity of the internet. now. Everything is happening online. So this is also something which you can really, really think about. Maybe start, start your own YouTube channel. I don't know. Go with your, your ideas and your passions. So that is online influencer. There are many more things that I can keep talking about, but with the constraint of the time, let me simply point out a few things, such as master in forensic medicine. So this also you can do after your BNYS, after doing the forensic medicine, you can uh, work for 
the forensic department for the criminal technology side for the forensic department. You can do masters in public health either from in from India or from overseas. So by doing this, uh, you will be hired as an uh, epidemiology specialist or for you know for the government sectors to work on making the what to say for the health public health schemes or to make it such schemes probably you will be hired after consider after doing the masters in public health program criminal psychology medical coding expert medical coding expert is nothing but uh, usually uh, in overseas you know the insurance is medical insurance is very very common and for each and everything you go to the hospital you will have to claim it to claim it through your medical insurance and when you are uh, when the when a patient is going to the hospital they will convert the data of the patient to codes so something like uh, for, for each and every medical term you will have a code and this code will be sent to uh, for the insurance department or for the purpose of data storage they will be coding this uh, and that is nothing but the medical coding expert you can go and read about a medical coding expert or medical coding how to do that so you will have to learn about the codes and that is something very interesting side that you can consider. Another one is a medical insurance doctor in countries like uh, UAE, probably uh, there is, you know, whenever there is a person who is claiming for the insurance, you will be the one who is analyzing or assessing the, the, the case. And, you know, you will be the one who is deciding to approve how much or whether to approve the insurance or not and you will be the doctor who is in charge of that. So that is called as medical insurance doctor. After BNYS, that is also a possibility. Palliative care specialist. Many of our uh, naturopathy treatments are very good to, uh, for the purpose of pain management. So because of that, palliative care specialist is also something which you can consider. And as I already mentioned in the entrepreneur slide, natural birthing centers and much more. There are many more opportunities that you can build your career upon after your BNYS. Now you'll be thinking, you'll be having many questions in your mind. Probably you'll be thinking, uh, there are a lot of things that I told now. What should I choose? What are my interests on? I don't know what is my interest in. What should I do now? Or how can I find that? Or you know, many, many questions will be there in your mind. Absolutely fine. Take your time. Do your research. And if you are a person who is looking to work abroad, let me give you a few tips. As I already mentioned, if you have your country already set, you know which country you want to work in, then go do the master's or some course there in that country. That will actually help you to get job easily or to get the license, it will help you in many ways. So if you have that already set, go do your master's in that country. Because, um, and also again, many of the countries were in, uh, for example, like country like a UAE, there will be a license exam called as DHA. Similarly, many countries will have their own license examinations. So to practice legally, you will have to clear that license exam. So if you have the country in your mind where you want to go and settle, see which license exam you have to clear and start preparing for that or start working on that. Again, whichever country you want to work in, prepare or, or work on your language skills. Many countries require IELTS exam or TOEFL exam, which are again, English proficiency examinations. And maybe if it is countries like a country in Southeast Asia wherein you don't need IELTS exam or a TOEFL exam, still you should have a very decent uh, language skill. It is not a rocket science. Anybody can uh, gain these talents. You know, you just go and listen to, uh, what to say, read English books. Our, our, our medical texts are in English, so maybe you read that. Gain grip on that language. Go listen to English songs, English movies, listen to podcasts. I don't know how you do it, but this is really achievable. Speak English or, you know, train the language. And again, as I already mentioned in some previous slide, our personality also matters because when you are working overseas, 
especially uh, how you look because we are yoga experts, naturopaths, we are promoting healthy living. And if you are not having a healthy body with you, uh, people don't rely on what you say. They won't believe you or you won't look reliable, right? If you are looking unhealthy or obese. So start working on that as well. So this is something, some tips that I want to give you if you are really looking forward to work abroad. And again, what, as I already uh, put the question, you will be thinking, uh, what should I do now? So I know most of the listeners will be students, BNYU students. So you will be in first or second year or third or fourth year. So if you are in first or second year, don't worry if you don't have a plan yet. You are just in the field. It is absolutely fine if you don't have a plan yet. What do you have to do? You get your basics correct. Go get your anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, all the basic subjects. Read, learn them thoroughly because these subjects, these basics will be always necessary whichever field you are choosing. So go get your basics correct. Read widely about international happenings in our field. Let me give you an example. Um, after completing the BNYs, after studying for five, five and a half years, working in India, then coming abroad, after coming here, I learned a lot of things, something called as yin yoga, fly yoga, something called as pilates, which is not really yoga, but something which is similar to yoga. So many things are there, which is happening internationally. Read about them. It is not just the yoga what we uh, learn in, in our BNYS curriculum. There are many more in things that is happening, evolving internationally. So read widely about international happenings. So you will have great idea about that. As I already mentioned, improve on your language skills, work on it. Improve on your health and your physique because how you look actually matters because we are kind of lifestyle consultants. So how we look will also actually matters. Get in touch with your seniors. Okay, so get in touch with your seniors because they are the ones who are going ahead of you. They will be the ones who is experiencing the things that you are going to experience in future. They have already experienced that. So get in touch with your seniors. You will gain more idea like, okay, my senior is working there or he got such an opportunity. So you will get different uh, options following up with the seniors. Whereas if you are in your third or fourth year, it is time to find what is your interest already. You should really get to know, okay, maybe I should work as a clinician or I should get into the hospitality industry or I should work as an acupuncturist or I should get like work in a medical exercise specialist or whatnot, you will have to figure out your interest very, very soon and start working on it. If you go to interest, start reading about it, research more on it and learn more things about that or start preparing, start thinking about what further studies you can do to gain more knowledge on that topic. And again, get good hands-on practice. Whatever treatments you're doing, for example, you're doing acupuncture, get good hands-on practice, make use of your internship to the maximum, get good hands-on practice. As I already mentioned, read widely about international happenings, improve your language skills, work on your health and physique, and keep in contact with your seniors. Just message them. Maybe you don't know them. Just message. Now social media is really, really popular and all are having either Facebook or Instagram page. Go message. Hey, hi, how are you doing? Maybe they don't know you, but just message. Oh, okay. I am your junior from this college. I'm also a BNYS student. Just let them know that such a you kind of a person is existing. So maybe, maybe when they are having a job opportunity, and they know you, probably they will recommend your name or, or they will let you know that such an opportunity is there, you can try. And it will help you in many ways. So keep in contact with your seniors. So that is uh, from my side. So if you have any questions or queries, uh, feel free to reach out to me on my, any of my email, uh, I would be happy to help you. And again, uh, to conclude with, if you 
again still feel like what should I do in my I mean after my BMYC graduation? Just sit back, as I already mentioned, if you are first and second year, absolutely fine. Get your basics correct. But if you are on third or fourth year, just try to you know identify or just think about what is your interest and start working on that. And don't worry if you have the potential, if you have the passion, immense is the opportunity that is waiting in front of you. So wishing you all the very best to all of you who are watching this. Uh, thank you for listening to me. Have a great, bright future ahead. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. That was a great session, to be honest. And uh, I, I would like to uh, know about your insights on uh, working in the sector that you are currently in. Any um, niches that you didn't know before that you learned after coming into this or any exciting experience that you would like to share with the viewers? Yes. So initially, to, before I moved into hospitality industry, I was working in India. So I was working as a uh, assistant professor in one of the colleges in India. So then I was really good with my clinical skills. But when I moved into the hospitality industry, clinical skill matters, but not really as working in a hospital. As I mentioned in my talk, when you go overseas, you will learn a lot of things which is happening internationally. That is why I mentioned about, uh, let me show, stop my screen share. Yeah. So you will learn a lot of new things, something like I, I already mentioned, I learned something called as yin yoga, fly yoga, uh, pilates. These all things were not really, I have heard about it, but I didn't know what exactly is that. So there were many things that I came across. I also go to know how great role or what great role we can play in in an international level you know if you know your basics correct and you are you are a doctor and you can do many things you are a package of many things you can you can do a class on nutrition dietetics you can do acupuncture you can teach yoga you can you know the anatomy so you can teach some exercises many things so i really got to know how valuable bnys is or a natural path is you know so when you go abroad, wide is your opportunity. So I'm really confident on that. Yeah, so that, that is one insight I got working abroad, yes. Okay, sir. And one more thing is I would like to share with you, uh, I would like to ask you that, uh, tell us about one mind block that students get stuck up during their BNYS that they have to overcome to flourish. So I already mentioned in the talk, I believe, uh, it is because we always will feel like we are the jack of all trades, master of none. We are learning many things and we are not really, we won't be really practicing it. So I also had that thought. I also thought, why should I learn obstetrics gynecology? I'm not going to become a gynecologist. I am learning pharmacology. I won't be doing this. But these are the basics or this will actually help you in your, you know, when you get into working. Maybe when you're seeing a patient, you have to get to know their history and they will be mentioning, okay, I tried this, I am taking this tablet. These all things are required, but we are having a very good position in when you come out after BNYS. So one mind block that you would feel is, you will feel like I am learning so many things and you, know, you can't really place position yourself, but that is not the case. That if you really are, if you're really passionate and if you're really having that skill or potential, you can place yourself and you can get a very, very greater heights you can achieve. That is something which I want to convey to all the students who are listening to this. Okay, so thank you so much for accepting our request and uh, sharing all these uh, knowledge with all of us. Thank I'm you. sure it's, it's my... going to be of great importance to every student who watches this. Thank you so yes. much. Thank you for inviting me, uh, for giving me an opportunity to come into your platform. I know it has uh, been very long back you have contacted me and we couldn't somehow, couldn't work it out. Somehow now it happened. I'm really glad. Thank you for the opportunity and great initiative, which is helping out a lot of students is what I know. Uh, keep the good work going. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.